This week on PCN Life, we bring you local eats from Lena's Kitchen in Plymouth, a farm-to-table Italian restaurant off of Exit 5, and Jeff Hills from Healthy Appetites is back with more great health information as he visits the set. We bring you a presentation at Duxbury's Unitarian Universalist Church from their Open Mind Speaker Series. That's right, Julie. The First Parish Church in Duxbury has always had thoughtful and educational programs offered to the public. Recently, PCN Life stopped into their Open Mind Speaker Series with Greater Boston PFLAG, a nonprofit group committed to helping change attitudes and create an environment of understanding for the LGBT community. It was a thought-provoking and powerful evening. <laughs> Surround yourself with loving people, and they, are, they come in all different forms, shapes, and sizes. The Open Mind Speaker Series um, here at First Parish Church um, has the goal of bringing diverse and stimulating speakers who have something to say about social justice issues to our church and to our broader community. So for uh, Greater Boston PFLAG, what we do is uh, we start off by explaining who we are and what we do. That in addition to educating, we have different support systems, both for, uh, for kids and their parents, going into school systems, educating there. So it's basically trying to create the, the largest web of support that we possibly can for LGBT youth and as we grow older. That's, that is one of the things that a lot of people find confusing, that one thing in, uh, in Western culture, we tend to have the, the just male and female, that uh, historically and even currently, there are some cultures that have additional genders. Uh, we would like people to come away uh, better informed than they are previously, that generally the people I meet who are against trans issues, generally they've only heard like, frightening things of the bathroom, like the way that it gets phrased, the bathroom bill, the idea that there's going to be a man going into the ladies room. Whereas what I want people to walk away with is the, the knowledge that a trans woman is not a man, a trans woman is a woman. A trans woman is a woman who has approached her gender in a different way than a cisgender or some people would say a regular lady has approached her gender, but is still the person that she is. In Navajo, the term is nele, literally the one is changing in the sense of undergoing constant transformation. We really hope that we will bring thought-provoking ideas to people, and we think these ideas will be of interest to people throughout the South Shore. I did not know that trans men existed until I was 20. A, a guest speaker came into my college, and that was the moment I, one, realized that I wasn't insane, and two, that was the moment I realized that I could grow up and be a person. And I thought, Oh, thank God, I'm not crazy. Because regardless of all of the terrifying things he was telling us, all I heard was, you don't have to die. I heard the story here, either you choose death or you choose life. That's where I was at with it. I embrace and welcome everyone with my true self, growing every day in confidence, love, and kindness. So I challenge you all to please be your authentic selves. It's not easy but it is worth it in the end. I promise you that. Thank you. We are pleased to have back on our set Jeff Hills, who's the owner of Healthy Appetites. Welcome back, Jeff. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. Today we're going to talk mostly about allergies because it's March, it's going into April, and it is, it is allergy season. I, for one person, don't know the difference between allergies and intolerances. So can we start with that before we get into actual allergies? That is typically more an issue for food allergies, where certain things you will be allergic to. Okay. Like peanuts or okay. shellfish. Yep. Um, and other things you might be intolerant to. And the difference is technically if it's an allergy, allergies involve your mast cells. And those are the cells in your body that release histamine. Okay. So if it's an allergy, those will be involved. Okay. And when you get that histamine reaction that is just out of control, that's when you get, you know, your throat closing yeah. and you need the EpiPen. Right. And intolerances are going to be things where you just don't handle them properly. And the big one that I think of for food would be gluten. Mm -hmm. So you can be allergic to milk, allergic right. to wheat, allergic right. to any number of foods, but you'd be intolerant of gluten because when you have a an issue with gluten, it doesn't involve your mast cells. Okay. So it does massive damage if you eat gluten and you're sensitive, if you have celiac disease. Right. 
it'll do massive damage to the cilia in your intestines. Mm -hmm. Those like the little finger-like yes. things that stick yep. up and yep. kind of absorb your nutrients. Yes. And those will be kind of, eventually just be kind of smashed Which is flat. bad because you really need those. Yeah, yeah. and that's yeah. because you're intolerant, but it's not technically an allergy. Okay, so when people come in looking for relief from allergies, what types of allergies are most common and, and how do you help them? Well, this time of year, airborne allergies are the big thing. So, you know, the... hay fever, yep. you know, with, however it's kind of typically referred to. Yeah. And there's any number of things you can do to fight that. Okay. So, you know, supplementally, the thing that, that we typically recommend is something called quercetin, mm -hmm. which is a really potent antioxidant. It's a bioflavonoid mm -hmm. derived usually from blue-green algae. Okay, and from the sea. It helps your helps make your body make less histamine. Okay. Which is kind of a nice way to go in that you know, most of the things you take that would be, you know, the OTC things mm -hmm. like, like Claritin and, right. and things like that yeah. will be histamine blockers. Right, that's an antihistamine. Yes, okay, right. exactly. That so you can... always say, take an antihistamine. So it's nice if you can have something that's going to kind of reduce that response in the right. first place. And hi is histamine the thing that, like, makes your eyes water? And, and, oh, yeah, and the nose okay. run. And, and the nose yeah. run and all this. So you know, you know when you have it. And so rather than treating it with an antihistamine, you can possibly treat it with something more natural. Something that's going to just reduce your output of the histamine in okay. the first place. So that's, okay. that's, you're going to see that in most of the allergy formulas that you see in a health food store. Okay. That and then there's an herb called stinging nettle. I've heard of that. Which is commonly yep. used for allergies as well. And you're going to see that in a lot of formulas. Something you don't see in a lot of allergy formulas yet. Yeah. But you're going to start seeing in the future will be an herb called butterbur. Okay, what does that do? And butterbur is a fantastic antihistamine that has been in Europe compared head-to-head to, head mm -hmm. to the over-the-counter okay. drugs that we yep. sell in this country. Okay. And it performed as well as they did without any side effects. All right. So the side effects you typically get with the antihistamines yeah. is drowsiness. Drowsiness, right. So right. you get none of that with the butterbur. Butterbur is also fantastic for migraines. Oh. And for urinary incontinence. So it's it's a, a really kind of... It's a natural ingredient that does a lot of things. It's a multi-purpose herb. It does a lot that's of great awesome. things. That's awesome. Okay, so that's outside allergies. Now, a lot of people are spending an awful lot of time of their day inside, in offices, things like that. What about allergies to dust and to things that are just in the environment that you're in, that you're sitting in and you're working in? Can you take something that'll help with that? The same things that work on the outdoor allergies, the, the hay the fever, same will, thing will work on the indoor okay. allergies. Specifically for that, though, there are some great homeopathic remedies that target mold, dust, and yeast. Okay. And we recommend those to anybody who's tried other things and, and, have, and hasn't had success. Okay. Or if you're sensitive to medications, because homeopathy is something that's very safe and will not get any sort of negative reaction from anybody. It's okay. safe for everyone. Mm hmm and can it, can't interfere with other medications you're taking. Now I have a question on, on that, with that statement you just made. A lot of times you could, we, with the drug you take, you can look up the tests and the, and the results of the, of the years of worth of studies that have been done on the effectiveness, the efficacy of a certain drug. Is there the same thing for the eff efficacy of supplements and things that, you're, uh, that you suggest people use? Or is it more that people just tell you? They just come in and say, this worked. Worked for me, it worked for my daughter, it worked for my neighbor. I mean, Well, I mean, on my end, of course, I see that. I get the people who right, come in. Right, you do, So I, so exactly. I get actual face-to-face -face right. feedback. As far as the testing goes, things aren't tested quite the same way that drugs are. Right. That's a, a very expensive long, drawn out Which is why drugs process. cost so much, right. Well, that's one of the reasons. One of the reasons. There's, there's all kinds of other reasons yes, for that yes. too. But there, there's typically small studies. There are a lot of university studies done on, yes. on the different yeah. supplements that are out there. Right. But they're not done quite like the drugs. So they're typically smaller studies. Yep. Uh, a lot of them are done overseas. Right. We don't uh, do a lot in this country with yeah, homeopathic medicine at all. not as much as we should. Yeah. Right. But it's, I think the trend is going there, at least to look at that as an alternative. There's more interest from the public. Right. And like everything else, it's very market driven. Yes. So if there's interest in things mm -hmm. that are going to cause less side effects, right. then the people who have money and are going to be able to do the testing and do the right. development of the right. products will become interested in them. Right. Right. So we're seeing more of that. That's good. And that's good. And we'll, I think we'll that's follow a step that trend. in the right direction. Yeah, of course it is. Of course it is. Now, as far as um, the foods we eat, are most of our allergies that are like really sudden from foods, like a, all of a sudden a peanut allergy or somebody is a uh, seafood and you see their face blow up? I mean, is it mostly food that have these really, really radical 
reactions? Those are the ones we all know. We all know the peanut reaction yes. or the tree nut reaction. Right. And there's, there's eight common food allergens. So you've got peanuts, yep. tree nuts, yep. soy, yeah. soy yep. dairy, mm -hmm. fish, shellfish, wheat, and corn. Those are wheat. the eight common allergens. That's, that's a, is that the gluten? That's gluten. You, can, you can actually have an allergy to other components in wheat, of wheat. that okay. are not the gluten. Oh, so glu really? Wheat, wheat's tough for a lot of people because you know a lot of people are allergic to wheat and a lot of people are sensitive to gluten. So that's a tough one. Wow, okay. And do the same things, apply, are there things that people can take for each of those eight um, issues with, not, with food? I mean, when you, if you have a response to uh, peanuts or shellfish, yeah. it's typically a little outside the realm of supplementation. Yeah. That's, that's then more, you're in trouble. That's yeah. a job for the EpiPen, right. I think, right. more than anything. <laughs> Thank God but, for those epi pens. You know, most most of the time people don't have that severe of a reaction. Right. But you know, we all know the yes. the, the, the child and in, in, you know yeah. in, in the neighborhood that yeah. has the peanut allergy right. that uh, you know is, is definitely allergic. Mm -hmm. You know, we've heard people die yeah, yeah, from it's, you know. It's, yeah, it's it's not it's not funny. It's yes, not it's, a funny, it's a serious, yeah, it's a very serious, serious, serious allergy. Thing. I mean, fortunately, most of the allergies aren't like that. That's typically not the reaction with corn right. or with wheat. Right. It's more with shellfish, fish, tree nuts, yes. peanuts. Those yes. are the ones that yeah. tend to, to get that sort of response. Severe response. So the ones that are more common, like dairy. Yeah, uh, it's more of an annoyance. Get that yeah. Now, how, is there anything that we can do at this time of year to prevent allergies? It, 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 by being super healthy and having all kinds of a good diet and good supplements, can we reduce our chance of being, have a reaction to allergies or if you have it, you have it? Well, you know, something that people do this time of year, and this is the time of year to start if you're going to consider doing something like this, mm -hmm. is if you've got airborne allergens, you know, if you've, if you've got an all hay fever, yep. then what people do this time of year is they get local honey. Mm -hmm. Now, the local honey, that, for instance, the stuff that, that, that would be in a, in a store like ours, would be often raw yeah. in local honey. So yeah. it's not heated, it's local, yeah. and that'll have some of the pollen in that it. occurs around ah. here. And people do it almost to kind of develop a resistance yep. to... Take a little bit at a time, yep. So before that... Before it gets out in the, in the air. Like, That's right, a really good idea. And people do that. The, the issue people have is they start too late. Yeah, right. So you, so know, you need the preemptive strike. Do it. If you're yeah. going to do it, do yeah. it now. Yeah. Good and, information. And if you do it too late, the problem you're going to have is... Now you just have to treat it. You're throwing gas on the fire. You yeah, know, you've right. already got the symptoms. Right, right. And now you're taking something that's that's adding more pollen. To the, right, that's right, not the right, way to go. Right. So, so start it now. Build it up. Okay. Interesting. You should be good. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. And we'll me. have you again. Great. Thanks. Okay. And now we go right back to Brian. Our local lead segment brings us to Lena's Kitchen in Plymouth for a story on this farm-to-table Italian restaurant. Some of my favorite memories growing up were times that I spent in my nanny's kitchen. She taught me that food equals family equals love. Named after co-owner Dan Casanelli's grandmother, Carolina's Kitchen embodies the beauty of Italian cooking, the love of food, so I am excited to share all of this with you today, and we're going to be heading back to the kitchen in just a moment to meet co-owner and executive chef Kevin. All right, I am in the kitchen at Lena's Kitchen with executive chef Kevin. Now tell me, you have taken Italian cooking to a whole new level of fresh. It's always traditionally been fresh ingredients. Tell me about your concepts. So we were thinking about what kind of concept that we were gonna put in this spot. And I've been cooking Italian food for the past eight years. Uh, I cooked in Italy for a month. And uh, one of my biggest things that I learned in Italy is that their cooking is all local, fresh ingredients what they can pick from their garden that day is what they're going to be eating. And that's what my grandmother used to do. The herbs were in the back garden and whatever she had in the kitchen is what became dinner that night. So it's a perfect way to put together a truly traditional Italian menu. So what is, it, what is your favorite part about cooking Italian cuisine for your customers? I just like every dish to really put a, a wow on people's face every single time we put it out of the kitchen. Well, from what I'm seeing in this kitchen, it's going to be a smile on everybody's face every evening. Thank you. 
So I'm going to head out to sit down with Dan, talk with him a little bit, and be able to taste some of your amazing food. Thank you. Excellent. You're welcome. Thank you. Dan, thank you so much for having us. I've been out back watching the magic that Kevin is making in the kitchen, and I wanted to come out and talk with you about your inspiration. I know that I referred to your restaurant as Carolina's Kitchen because it is modeled after the love you learned from your grandmother, Carolina. But in Lena's Kitchen, tell me more about your inspiration and why you chose to open this restaurant. Um, we, we really wanted to focus on the love behind the food and really providing the ultimate dining experience to our guests that come in here, really focusing on everything from the Italian wines to pairing it with the Italian food, the fresh ingredients that we use. Now, another thing about your restaurant that really reminded me of my family and my family's cooking was people used to you know, tease us about pasta is with every meal and it comes before the main dish. And you offer that here as well. So we have our appetizers, we have our pasta cores, and then we have our entree. Tell me about what I'm about to dig into. Absolutely. So what you have in front of you is a Monte ravioli, which is a new creation from, from Chef. And what it is is a garlic sour cream um, sauce on the bottom with a little chive oil. And also it is inside the ravioli is lamb and mascarpone. So it's been, you know, very hearty for, for the winter months and um, people have been really been enjoying it since it's been on the menu. What I have in front of me has been by far the house favorite, which is a wild boar bolognese, which is a very traditional um, pasta dish. And we have it with a fresh pasta, mezzi rigatoni, um, topped with a sage ricotta, which we make in-house. Well, Dan, mangia. Let's enjoy this before we dig into our entree course. Thank you again for having us Perfect. here at Lena's Kitchen. Thank you. And Kevin has been inspired again and brought us an amazing entree. Tell me what we have here, Dan. So what we have here is a grilled Maine salmon, which has been one of the most popular dishes on our, on our menu, and it sits on top a lobster mashed potatoes, which people go wild over. That just sounds incredibly decadent and yummy at the same time. <laughs> All right, I think we should dig into this because I know Kevin is out back creating us something amazing for dessert. He told me he won't let me know in advance, but it is, as they say, a fan favorite. I can assure you it's delicious. All our desserts are house made and uh, you will not be disappointed. What creation do we have here? <gasps> Ooh, that's beautiful. Is that Bananas Foster? This is our house favorite Banana Foster. Yes. Oh my God, Kevin, thank you so much. You're this welcome. is gorgeous. With vanilla gelato. Well, I think this is a perfect way to end a wonderful meal with a sweet to be shared. I'd like to thank you again for having us here today. And from Lena's Kitchen, I am Donna Rodriguez for PCN's Local Eats. Thanks for watching PCN Life. Check out PACTV.org for more information about the show. If you have a story idea, fill out a submission form on our website. PCN Life is on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, so be sure to follow us, and we'll see you in two weeks with another New Life episode.